Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for his goodness and kindness and extended mercy and all of his bountiful and wondrous blessings he has stored upon us. And even what he's yet to do, we thank him. Yes. Tonight we're going to look at Revelation chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. Revelation chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you. For your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon we, your people. We often tell you, God, you have and are better than us we are to ourselves. Wherever we're glad about it, God, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness and who you are. You are El Shaddai. You are more than enough. And God, we invite you this evening into the Bible study. Be everything be done and say to bring your honor and bring your glory. Have your way this evening. That we will learn of your word. As we learn of your word, we will grow, God, and mature through and by your word and be the people you are calling for in these last and even days, God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' awesome and mighty name we pray and we do thank you. Amen. Revelation 11, 8 and 9, read it from the King James Version. Verse 8 says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. Let's dig. That's some nuggets here. But before I get into verse 8, I want to go back to verse 7 so I can walk into verse 8. Verse 7 says this, And when they shall have finished their testimony or their witness or their preaching, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit or abyss shall make war against them and shall overcome or conquer them and kill them. I got the emphasis at verse 7. When their mission, their assignment is up, after the three and a half years has ended, after 42 months have ended, after 1,260 days has ended, then the beast, the wild animal from the bottomless pit that has no bottom, or the abyss, shall war against them and kill them. I need to emphasize, war against them and kill them. One more time. War against them and kill them. After their mission has been accomplished. Okay, let's see. Verse 8. This is, this is pretty much morbid when we look at this. He says in verse 8, their dead bodies shall lie. Right, let's, let's just forget this. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. I'm going to emphasize in the street. Not in the mortuary, but in the street of the great city. Mm. Their corpses lie in what's in the marketplace. Can I do this way? After they're killed, their bodies will be in the mall. <laughs> Let me contemporize it. Their bodies will be in the mall. In an open street, 
of the great town in the square. Go back to the mall. The mall. Where everybody's at. Watch this. To show their disrespect. To show their disrespect. The people will leave the dead bodies of the witnesses exposed on the wide road or main street of the great city. Can you imagine this? Dead bodies, dead, exposed where everybody can see them. What really gets me, these are servants of the Most High God. And the wild beast has killed them and left them out in the open where everybody can see them. Wow. You better go for I go to the second part of this. I want to be alone tonight, I don't think. <laughs> okay, the weather? All right, I'm going on. Second part of this verse. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. The word spiritual means also which symbolically is called Sodom and Egypt. And where also our Lord was crucified. The question I want to ask the text is this right here. Right, right here. Which spiritually or symbolically is called Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? This is a question I want to ask the text. Why is it called Sodom and Egypt. What reason is this great city called that? <laughs> We're going to find out right now. The city is really not named, but it is identified as a spiritual Sodom and Egypt. <laughs> because it is the city where Christ was crucified. Uh, come on, we'll walk with the young. Hmm. Jerusalem is the great city. Jerusalem is the great city. Let's go further. Not because of its size, nor because of its population. <laughs> but because it had a great and important plan or important place in God's plan. At this time, it had become a city, watch this, a city of great sin. Yes. A, great, a, a, a city of great sin. And that's why, as we look at it, it says, called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom, you know all about that. All that we're doing in Sodom and Gomorrah. And then, and I, I'll, go, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about Sodom and, I, and then all that Egypt was. And Pharaoh was all about sin and all about captivity of the Israelites. I'll tell you more about that in a minute too. But that's why they called Jerusalem at, the, at that time. Sodom and Egypt because of its sin. Watch this. Of its great sin. Not just sin. Great sin. The Lord said great sin. Not just sin, but great sin. Oh, this way. An abundance of sin. Watch this. Because of its moral and spiritual degradation. Isaiah in his day had called the call its rules, Solomon rules, <laughs> Solomon rules, and its people, Gomorrah. If you would be so kind, someone, to read Isaiah 1 and 10, and then, I'll, I'll let you do this, somebody will get also Ezekiel 
16 and 49. But right now I want Isaiah 1 and 10. This is supporting scripture to what I just read. Isaiah 1 and 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Hold on. What, what verse do you read? Okay, go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye rulers of Sodom. And hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of uh, the Lord. Tomorrow. Here, I'm going to read another translation. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. Listen to the Lord, you leaders of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, people of Gomorrah. <laughs> what Isaiah is telling the people to listen to what God is saying. You, watch it. He says, you leaders. NLT says, you leaders. You ones who are in charge. Watch it. You ones who are, are held really account, more accountable than the ones who follow. Because you are leading the people. And Isaiah says, listen, you leaders of Sodom. Watch this. Listen to the law of God, people of Gomorrah. He says to the leaders, listen. And then he tells the people to listen. Mm. So what he does is because if, I'm going to suggest to us, that he tells the leader to listen, obey, hear, Sodom, and then he says, you people, Gomorrah. So he said, not only am I talking to the leaders, but I'm also talking to you, the parishioners. Oh, Jesus. Y'all ain't getting out of it either. Y'all got to listen too. You got to hear too. What's good, I'm saying this way, it's going to be kind of comical. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And so watch this. The dead bodies of the witnesses lie in the street of Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem is here called Sodom because, now I'm going to tell you why it's called Sodom. I'm going to tell you why it's called Sodom. Listen to this. And don't it sound like us today? Watch this. Jerusalem is called Sodom because of its pride, indulgence, prosperous ease, and indifference. Hello, somebody. Indifference to the needs, watch it, to the needs of others. Now, if you have Ezekiel 4, 16 and 49, I need to read that. Sixteen forty nine. And you got to read. Tell me what version you read from. Sixteen forty nine. Mm -hmm. And the King James Version. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride. Full of this of food. Abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Watch this. I like how Ezekiel shows this Sodom. And I want to read. She's read, she's read from New King James. I want to read from the uh, uh, the century version. This is this. They were arrogant. Y'all catch that? They were arrogant. What? Not only they arrogant, they were spoiled. <laughs> they had everything they needed and still refused to help the poor and the needy. 
They were arrogant and they were spoiled and they refused to help the needy and the poor. They were, watching, they were all wrapped up in themselves mm -hmm. and didn't care about anybody else. Basically, they said, you're on your own. I got mine. You're on your own. Wow. I'm going to go back and read the New King James for a minute. He said, look. I want you to know the word. Look or see. I want to bring to your attention. That's what that is right there. I want to bring to your attention. This was the iniquity of your sister, Sodom. She and her daughter had pride or arrogance. Full of food, got all the food they need, more than what they need. In an abundance, what? abundance of items. Stuck on themselves. I know about themselves. Not about anybody else. All about me and me alone. That's dangerous ground. Mm -hmm. Neither did she strengthen. Here it is. Neither did she, she was strong, but neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. Dangerous ground. Wow. Listen to this. And I'm going to tell you why Jerusalem is called Egypt. And it is called Egypt because of its idolatry, persecution, and, watch this, enslavement to sin and unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. And it's called Egypt because of its idolatry. Persecution and enslavement to sin and unrighteousness. Wow. Mm. The place where Christ was crucified. Get that. The place where Christ was crucified is like Sodom and Egypt. Where our Lord and Savior died on the cross, they were called. Sodom and Egypt because of their works. Their evil deeds. Their evilness. That's why they were called this. Wow. Anybody want to add on? I don't know which one you was first. <laughs> huh? I got a question. You got a question? Okay. I'll get her and I'll come to you. If I can answer. Okay. So the question is, so I do know that the bodies, spiritually the bodies, they lay Live in the street. Mm -hmm. So is this what? <laughs> so it's actually saying that they were never there. I'll tell you a minute. I, I can't answer until I get to nine. Okay. <laughs> and I will. And I have the answer to that. It says nine, though. No. <laughs> the answer to that is in, the, in, the, in verse nine. <laughs> so help it though. Go on, ask that question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Christ was crucified. Watch this. Will you do? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to connect that dot right now with the Lord's help. Anytime a person or a city a city or a town or a nation forgets about God, God will allow the city to be where they like that. Now watch this. Let me go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Old Testament. God couldn't find ten witnesses. In the whole town. He broke it down. And said, if I can find, watch it, if I can find ten righteous. Can y'all get that? Ten. I come out 
400. I ain't talking about 20. I ain't talking about 15. I said, I'm asking for 10. I was spared the city. He couldn't find 10 righteous persons. Because sin had multiplied itself in the city. Sin had multiplied itself in Jerusalem, the place where Christ was crucified. And what happened was the people allowed iniquity to rule and control them. The city, the city, the town. Allowed iniquity, sin, to overtake them, to rule the town and city. And so that's where it's at. Same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. God, I, this just baffles me as I'm, as I'm talking about it. God could not find, let me go this way. God could not find 10 saved folk. 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Couldn't find 10. I started for 10. Couldn't find 10. Because sin was rampant. And sin had taken over. It's dangerous ground with the people of God allow sin to control them and they denounce God and turn to, to unrighteousness. And that's what happened. Yes, ma'am. Um, you were asking like, how? I think like, you look down, you complain, you, get, you quit hanging out with brothers and sisters and then all of a sudden you get kind of hard-hearted and start thinking like, gosh, different things instead of I want to be there. You, it's you just get it's like you get blinded by a small by walking in the flesh instead of in the spirit. I guess yes. is what I'm saying. Yes. And it doesn't take long. I know for myself. Yes. I'll, I'll just disintegrate quickly yes. in the flesh. Yes. It's terrible. They lost. And I heard you. They lost their heart for God. They hung around, I'm going to use what you just said, they hung around the wrong people and they became infested. Contagious, I like that. Infested, contagious with who they hung around with. The Bible tells us, listen to me y'all, the Bible says, uh, come from among you. Be ye separate, said the Lord. Not say Paul, but said the Lord. Because if, and here's my analogy, I always use it, I'm using it a while, if we clean a pig up, and he, and, and he runs back to his environment, he's going to be what he's being. Because he goes back to his, his environment. And so people will hang out with the wrong people and become infested. They become contaminated. And so in their contamination, they'll contaminate somebody else. I'm using the word. And they convince somebody else. Mm -hmm. And of course I want to ask, and I, when I say that, it's how much did you love God anyway? <laughs> Watch this. Did you really have a relationship with God? Or did you just have a verbal relationship with God? Now, let me explain my verbal talk when I say verbal. Well, you're just talking about it, but did it really didn't uh, authentically have a relationship with him. You, know, this. you didn't spend time with him in prayer, in reading the scripture, in fasting and prayer. You didn't, you didn't have that time. You didn't spend that time with him. Because I believe, it's just me. I believe that if we spend time like that with God, there's no, there is no way in the world you can backslide. There's no way in the world you can be contaminated and infested by other people. Because number one, you're going you to be so in tune with God that you're not going to hang around with that infestation. <laughs> that contamination. You're going you're gonna to refrain from all of that. Because you've been spending time with God and you've spent time in his word and you know what the word says. And that's why David said, David says in 119, he says, Thy word, your word have I given my heart, that I might not sin against you, that I might not watch it, that I might not that I might not upset you. Right. <laughs> because we see Sodom and Egypt upset God. <laughs> by the uh, by what they did and by their characteristics. And by their traits, which is the same thing as characteristic, all of this upset God. Not only does it upset God, you know, it displeased God. <laughs> God was not pleased with that. Yes. 
Maria Helena? Hoe is het met die stappen? Oké. Hé, Maria? Yes, ma'am. Because of their foolishness, their idiotic ways of living, and we do the same thing in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Same exact thing. Just a different time. And our love of God is it really love? Again, are we just talking about it? Because I'm using, I'm using a secular term. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> if there's no put, proof in the pudding, your pudding ain't no good. <laughs> Jesus is that way. Then. <laughs> we talk about it. I'm going to use, it, I'm use, it, I'm use it, uh, a sport term. We talk about your game, but our game is garbage. Our game is trash because if there is no proof of what we're saying, of our love of God. Because if it were, we would not be doing what we do, say what we say, and that's what we act. And I want to say something to us and who watching. God is on his way back. And he's soon returned. And we don't have time at crazy foolishness and all that craziness. He's on his way back. We see so much stuff happening so quickly in California. They killed 11 people, maybe more than them. 11, as I heard, in a dance studio. A few days later, Seven are killed. People are crazy. People on the on the news, on rampage. They're losing their minds. But I heard the Bible say, Thou I shall keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is staying on me, and also trust me. There cannot be a peace of mind until you trust me. <laughs> there must be trust in who we serve. And often keep our minds. Anybody else? I got stirred up. Go ahead. I have a scripture. Talk to me. It's Read from me. Luke 14. Um, I guess I got 16. I'll have to go to Okay. Um, and then he said to him, A certain man gave great supper and invited many. <laughs> And sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Mm -hmm. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. Jesus. That breaks my heart. Jesus. That breaks my heart. Yes. Lord, are you busy? Yes. That's Egypt. Stop That's all. Yeah. Involved in yourself, too. I, mm -hmm. like, 
you've got too much time to have any time to do anything. Mm -hmm. Or anybody but you. And when you read that, you talk that's about us. It. Like this. Yes. <laughs> this is talking about us. Yes. And when you read the rest of that, it talks about our boss of property at nighttime. Yes. Who buys property at nighttime? And I go see them. How you gonna look at it real good at night? It's dark. Then one said, I just got married. And then I forget the third one. Uh, <laughs> all these are excuses. Watch this. This man has a great supper. He invites, watch this, this is in and everybody to his supper. It, it is a metaphor of God to the people. I got this great celebration going on. I'm inviting everybody who want to come. Come on. But they refuse to come. And when you read the rest of it, Sister Lisa, he said, since they, they, they wouldn't come, he said, invite the poor. Yes. When, you, when you read it, it says, invite the poor. Those who have nothing, all that stuff, tell them come on. Because I'm not going to have all this for nothing. I'm going to get those who want to come. Watch it. I'm going to get those who I can't reach. <laughs> because the others I tried to invite, they were too arrogant. They were too stuck on themselves to come to my, my feast. But I'm going to get the ones who ain't got nothing, who got a, watch it, who have a heart to want to come, mm -hmm. and who will have a heart to be changed. Yes. Oh, wow. People in the pit. Yeah. A lot of us in the pit are hungry and thirsty. Yes. And they're thankful. Yes. To be at their seat. Yes. And how hungry are we? Mm -hmm. That's the question I want to ask. I want, I want to pose this question. How hungry are you for God? Paul says this. I don't going to go through all, all the, uh, uh, the things. Uh, he says, what shall separate me from the love of God? And he goes into all the things that could <laughs> separate me from the love of God. But he said this. He says, I'm persuaded. If you read it in the, in the NIV, he says, I'm convinced that I'm mm -hmm. nothing separate me from the love of God. Wait, he realizes that his love, God's love for him was so authentic, so genuine, and, and so uh, so impactful and so powerful of his love. He said, love like this? I can't find love like this nowhere. He said, so I realize this. I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> in the 8th chapter of Romans. He goes with all that. Because he's so, he's so, not that he's perfect, but he's so in tune with God. He has spent so much time with God. He has devoted his life to God that he said, I'm not letting anything happen. Yeah, just me. In John, where he talks about him and me and me and him and me and you and you and me, yeah. you can't yeah. separate that. Because yeah. we're all in and, each, yeah. in and like through. And, mm -hmm. That, that's a mysterious text passage, yes. but it's beautiful. I'm, oh, yes. I'm, so, I'm yes. just so thankful of it because we can't do that. We can't we can't fuse ourselves into the Son to have the Father. Like we can't yeah. only the blood. Yeah, exactly. He's so good. Though. Yes, he is. And, and as you said, uh, a scripture came to mind in John three and thirty. He said this. John said. This. He says, I must decrease. In other words, I must empty myself of myself that he may increase, that he may come greater in my life. When you read it, in the other translation, he says that he may come greater in my life, that he may be more of him in me, and that I will empty myself and decrease of myself that he will be greater in my life. He says, watch this. He's, in essence, he's saying, this is my desire for me to decrease. This is my desire that he may increase in me, that I may become better, yes. that I may become the person that he has called me to be. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm, adding, I'm adding this. It's not a description. To be the one he's calling for these evil days and these last days. Mm -hmm. But in order for this to happen, I got to, first of all, I got to decrease. Mm -hmm. First things first. I can't, he cannot increase until I decrease. <laughs> Because he can't increase if I'm already increasing of myself. So I got to decrease of myself that he may come in and make me better. <laughs>
Yes. Anybody else? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. satisfaction of the flesh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. what happened was they allowed their flesh to be satisfied mm -hmm. with the things of the world and of sin and of pride mm -hmm. of uh, degradation and indulgence in the sinful things because it was what it was it, it appeased the flesh yes. they did not allow themselves to crucify the flesh mm -hmm. they did not allow but I'm going to do this way. I'll do this way. They did not allow God to crucify the flesh. They allowed themselves to be empowered by sin and the cravings and the lust of the flesh. Ooh, Jesus. The lust of the flesh. The, wait, the desires of the flesh. The cravings of the flesh. They allowed that to take over and did not allow God to change them. Or cast it out of them. Right. You got to want to. And this is a year of, Lord, make me better. Yes. It's all up to us. God is not going to force himself on any of us. None of us. You hear me? None of us. He's not going to force himself on none of us. It is up to us to want more God. It is up to us to want to stay on the potter's wheel and let him get the bubbles, Lisa, the bubbles out. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but we need the bubbles out. Yes. We're disfigured spiritually. Right. We're deformed spiritually. And I want to tell you something, me personally. I don't want to say deformed spiritually. I don't have these big bumps and lumps and bubbles in my in my frame when I got the, the greatest hands on <laughs> in the universe. <Yes. laughs> Who is molding me? Who is shaping me to who? What's it? Not to who I want to be, but to who He wants me to be. Yes. So keep me on the wheel, and y'all gonna hear me say that all throughout the year. Right. Keep me on the wheel. Yes, ma'am. It's earth and vessel He's making, and then He wants to fill it with His Spirit so that it's evident that it's way more than what a human can do. Yes. That we're so, and if we have cracks and flaws and pits. It's not, it's not going to be a holy vessel that, that contains living waters in and out. It's like a whole system that keeps you spiritually yeah. healthy while you, while he just does his life yeah. for you. But it's got to be in a vessel that's made by his hands, mm -hmm. that, that, that those Smoking bumps are hands. important yeah. not to have yes. because at the point when we need that to be there, that life force. Yeah. If a vessel's not right, it can't contain it. That's exactly right. Exactly. Right. And it's not usable. Right. Can I use another word? No, I'll throw your hand to the left. You are just spirit, spiritually disfigured. Yes. Yeah. Spiritually disformed. Yes. yes. And he wants to he wants to he wants to refigure you and reform us. Yes. Thank you. Can I say that again? He wants to refigure us mm -hmm. and reform us. Yeah. <laughs> Read. Means do over. Yes, <laughs> yes ma'am. I was uh, sharing with Minister Brother earlier. The uh, Lord spoke to me about uh, the need of help. He said it's that way, the need of help in your life. You know the need of help that you need in your life. But until you open your mouth, he won't do anything because you're not asking for help. Mm -hmm. You just walk around, but I know mm -hmm. I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this, but you're not talking to the Lord yes. who can help you. Mm -hmm. So he's waiting. Yes. And you know the need to help. And the scripture just said, "Help not because you ask not." Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna use another sign. I'm gonna use another word. I'm gonna use another way. You don't have a you don't have a help help wanted sign out. Oh yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because when businesses establishments want help, they have a big sign. I said, "Help wanted. I need your help." We as a people of God need to have our help want to sign out. I need your help, God. 
Oh, right, this is a good one. Yes, ma'am.
use the word. The word for big fry, in other words, which I believe is not like that. Oh, uh. And what? I think you said earlier, this was disrespectful to the, to the two witnesses. Yes. Disrespectful. Yes. They did not respect. Mm -hmm. It is. Not so much to the witnesses. They did not respect the God that was in the witnesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what they were really doing, thank you, Lord, we're really doing, so now they were doing all that and they couldn't be touched then for three and a half years. But now, this beast, this wild beast, this wild animal has killed and devoured the two witnesses who had power and had protection. And now, they're saying, there wasn't protection at now. And so they exposed them to show that their power was gone. Wow. But wait a minute. I got to tell you this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It looks like, help me, Holy Ghost. It looks like it's defeat. Yes. But. But when you look at the rest of the book, can I go this? Can I do this? I feel like preaching. But I got to teach. Uh, when you go to the back of the book, go to the back of the book, it shows that we win. Mm -hmm. It looks like the saints are defeated. But at the back of the book, we are victorious. Can I go further? These who were exposed for three and a half days, they still got the victory at the end. Because mm -hmm. watch this. They get up. Yes. <laughs> Look at the defeat. All that looks like defeat. But at the end, they walk in victory. They get up in victory. They get up in power. They get up in authority. It looks bad right there. But at the end of the book, they got the victory. <laughs> Can I go further? They are not a defeated foe at the end. <laughs> Good God from Zion. Woo-wee! Yeah, come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm getting stirred up. It just reminds me of what you're talking about. That reminds me of that uh, story of Ella Williams. Always tell of the young man who was um, caught up in this superhero, and the uh, superhero he was reading a book and he seen that the superhero was getting like the getting beat up and he couldn't understand like why did he get beat up and he's a superhero. And so when the dead were to look at he began to look at the back of the book. He went to the back of the book to see what happened in the story. And he seen at the end what happened. He went back to the beginning of the book. He started reading. And he, every time he came to the part where the superhero said he was getting beat up, he would say out loud, you don't know like I know. <laughs> and he would tell like the, the, the bad person, you don't know like I know. I know what's going to happen in the end because I have read the back of the book now. Yes. So that his story just came to me. That's where he's going to always say it. They said, when the enemy comes, he's just let him know. You don't know like I know. Yeah. But you didn't already, you didn't already read it. You mm -hmm. already know you got the victory. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. I will go through mm -hmm. to get to mm -hmm. that sometimes it doesn't seem like we have the victory. But if we believe that we stay fast, unmovable, mm -hmm. he's given us the victory. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she said it. I saw you. Mm -hmm. Paul says this mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's crucifixion. In, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yeah. He said this. Thanks be to God. Yes. Which give us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those who hang in there. In the tough, rough times. Who hang in there. Thanks be to God who give us the victory. Watch this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Yes. <laughs> Look, I'm going to feed the floor right now, but I'm going to keep on dancing. Because thanks to God, yeah. I got the victory. Yeah. <laughs> I have the victory. Mm -hmm. 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. I'm, I'm just seeing it's, you know, it looked like when Jesus died, mm -hmm. it looked like he was defeated too. Oh, yes, it like, did. It looks like it things, did. It looked just, and this says, it's talking about this, and it's like, it added, uh, it was Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was coming out of And note this, it's also like they did that. Mm -hmm. And and they used the word overcome. They make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. Conquer them. But, the, by God. Uh -huh. <laughs> by God. Yeah. yeah. And by I'm God. thinking of the people who are so endeared to this beast. That, yes. I mean... They don't seem to mind that this beast has done this thing. Yeah. They're busy worried about disrespecting. Yes. It's the men of God. Yeah. But at least, I know they didn't eat them. That's, April, that's April, second Sunday in April. Okay. I know they didn't eat them. But I will tell you the story that the, the people talk about. Thought was, they thought they had it. The story is, preachers say it this way. They say, but in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. he started to move. And I tried to hold him down with all I got. He kept moving. But in the morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> he let him be. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to work. I might use that. <laughs> I might use that. I'm stopping like that. <laughs> So I'm stopping right there. I'm stopping right there. I got to write it down, people. I ain't going to <laughs> Have you remember, Lord? <laughs> but anyway, he, he comes out in victory. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm just about to end. I ain't going to forget. I ain't not going to forget. I ain't not going to forget. That thought just hit me and it just uh, opened my mouth. Mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anybody else? Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. If no other questions, we will look at next week uh, 10 and 11. Versus 10 and 11 next week. What's wrong? You see it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> 10 11 next week. I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper. I'll say it like that. It gets deeper and deeper. Yes. Next week. Yeah. So we're we'll looking at 10 11 next week. We're about to pray. I have some names I'm going to for us. I uh, want to pray for the Pinkston family. In the loss of a loved one. Uh, so Lisa, I, I got you on my list. The Lord bless you. Uh, and good to see you tonight here as well. Uh, uh, Mr. Marcel, I'm praying for him. He has served me yesterday. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. He has served me yesterday. Seriously served me yesterday. He called me this morning. He's going home. Here's what he, this is. This is this, this is how this is why I, I serve God. He calls me this morning, early in the morning. I mean here early. He said, the, he said, Bishop, the doctor said, if I do such and such, I can go home the day I, it happens. He said, I did, and they tell me I'm going home that day. He had made the surgery yesterday. He goes home today. That's the God we serve. Yes, sir. We want to pray for him. Uh, we want to pray for, uh, got a call from uh, Sister Dina. Uh, prayer for her husband. It's, uh, it's, it's critical. Uh, Don. Uh, it's critical as well. Uh, Sister Williams. Uh, she's going through something right now, too. Went to the doctor and something. Uh, with her. Uh, I mean, we ain't got time to play y'all. Uh, it, it's, a, it's about getting close to God like never before. People are going through some stuff they have never gone through before, and, and, it, and it's taken for a loop because they've never experienced it before, and it's taken for a serious loop. 
I just want to pray for these persons. Are there any other persons? Y'all know what? I need to get a pen. Kroger's, right? Okay. And that's, that's, that's everywhere. Well, it's like old store. It's old store. Okay. Because we're the same where I work at the same bank. I mean, they put a, a thing out uh, yesterday. Uh, same bank. People won't work. Uh, it's crazy. Somebody else had their hand up. Yes, ma'am. David uh, Ross Sr. Somebody said anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, our receptionist secretary in our Frankfurt office, mm -hmm. her name is Shay. My mother passed. Is that, is that with an A or with a Y? With an A. Okay. Okay. She lost her mother? Mm -hmm. Keep it going out here, y'all. Yes, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Latoya. Davis. Her name was Joshua Davis. Okay. Look to the Lord. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you again for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you are yet to do, we thank you. Thank you for tonight's lesson. Thank you for the inputs this evening, God. We pray, God, that you will bless us as we have read the two verses of Scripture this evening and chapters previously up to this point. Help us, God, be mindful of your return. 
as we are mindful of your return, that we will draw closer to you like never before. That we will do like the Apostle Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. God, I pray, God, that you will bless the names that brought before us. I pray, God, you bless the pigs and family and the loss of a loved one. Give comfort. Give strength. You reach where no one can reach and you touch where no one can touch. God, you do as only you can do. Not only that family, but again, continually, the walk of family, God. Continue to comfort and strengthen them as well. Comfort the David's family, God, in the loss of a loved one as well. Reach where no one can reach and you touch where no one can touch. You do as only you can do. In the name of Jesus. Not only those families, God, but bereaved families everywhere. Those bereaved families in California, God. Cover them, God. And, and, and you reach where no one can reach and you touch where no one can touch, God. You do as only you can do, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, I pray, God, that you will bless God. Uh, not only but bless the Diana family. Touch them and bless them, God. We thank you for Sister Lisa being here this evening, God. Could you touch her body, could you strengthen her body with your mighty hand of healing from the top of her head to the sole of her feet? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless uh, David Ross, Sr., God. Touch his body with your mighty hand of healing from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Touch God as well, God. Touch his body with your mighty hand of healing as well. Uh, touch the, uh, Dana and, 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 and Sister Phil. Touch them and bless them, God, as well. Oh, God, strengthen them, God, in a mighty abundant way. We pray, God, you bless Mr. Marcel. We thank you what you've done for him and what you're going to do for him, God. Continue to bless him, God. Continue to bless his recovery to spring forth speedily, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And, God, I pray, God, you bless Shane. Uh, also, in the loss, God, of loved ones as well, God, you touch and bless in the loss of her mother. Cover her, God, as only you can do as the family, God. You reach, God, where no one can reach, and you touch where no one can touch. You do as only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you bless the Brenda Rose. Touch her body to body, hand of healing. Bring back strength, mobility back to her body, God. For you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the restorer of health, God. Touch and bless in a mighty and an abundant way. God, I pray you touch Elder Walker, God. Restore his health as well, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power, God. Bless to Larissa, God, and what she's got to go through, God. I pray you touch and bless her in a mighty abundant way as well, God. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, bless all of the sick of the church. Name by name and one by one, God, we speak here to the help be upon their minds, God. Bless Mr. Travis as he goes for yes. surgery on tomorrow, God. Guide the hands of the surgeon. Yes. Give the surgeon wisdom and the knowledge before me, God. And, 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 and oh, her recovery yes. shall spring for speedy. Mm -hmm. There will be no complications, God. Move by your mighty hand yes. and move by your mighty power. Touch in the name of Jesus. Anoint the surgeon's hands in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, again, move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power. Oh, God, if you leave your house, go a various ways, get in every vehicle. Bind every mechanical problem. Dispatch your angels round about us in our travel, God. We pray to travel in mercy, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. And God bless the church on Sunday. Beat everything we've done to say to bring your honor and bring your glory, God. I pray we be the same mind, the same spirit in worship, God. Have your way on Sunday. We cast out every spirit, God. Every healing, God. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. Move by your mighty hand. Move by your mighty power. Go in under the air and touch hearts. Touch minds, God. Move by your mighty hand in the name of Jesus. We pray fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh anointing will be in the midst of us on Sunday, God. Bless the woman who brings with the word on Sunday. Be with her and speak through her, God. 
Use them for your glory and your honor, God, on Sunday, God. Oh, God, move mighty, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' awesome and mighty name, we pray and we do thank you. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Let me do this little footnote for pronouncement. Uh, Evangelist Wanda Wilson will be speaking for the youth on Sunday morning. I will not be speaking. It will be Evangelist Wanda Wilson will be speaking. I get another break. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and let me put this footnote in there too. And I said, New Year's Eve, preachers, be prepared. I'm going to announce, I'm going to say right now, I'm going to announce who the next ones are. I'm going from the top of the list. What's my way down? And I'll tell you who's next and when they are preaching next. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. This is our prayer. Blessings to you, the people of God. Until next time, Lord say the same. Blessings.